Recently, I almost bought my Grail watch. And just before buying it, just before committing to that amount of money, I realized it would be an absolutely terrible decision for me to buy it. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I'm talking about watches. I'm talking about buying my Grail watch. And a Grail watch for me, at the prices that they are, they feel like they should be around about 10 years in my future. Feels like that in 10 years time, that would be a good time to buy my grail. And I was starting to think, why am I thinking 10 years? Why is this 10 year idea stuck in my head? And I know why. It is because when I turned 40 or around about 40, I started to realize that I might actually buy a grail watch. Prior to that, I loved these grail watch ideas, these lovely watches, but I never really allowed myself the ability to consider that I might buy one. It was always, yes, they're really lovely, but I'm never going to buy one of those. So I never really had that thought. At around 40, I think I started to get into watches even more. There was sort of more of my ideas and thoughts about it. And I started thinking, oh, actually, I might be able to buy one. And of course, 10 years after 40 is 50. And 50 is a bit of a grail sort of type achievement in life. Or at least it's a number which sounds like I should be sort of giving myself something special. And 10 years was born into my head. It is now a few years later, not 10 years later by any means, I hope you don't think I'm 50, but I'm now in a position where I suddenly realized that I might actually be able to buy my Grail watch very soon rather than that 10 years in the future. And there were three reasons why I suddenly realized that. Firstly, I'd started putting a little bit of money aside at, at that age of 40. Not much, a tiny little bit each week that I thought would add up over the 10 years, then I won't be able to buy myself something rather special. And that amount of money over the last few years has added up. Certainly not enough, however, to buy my Grail watch. Secondly, the prices of the watches that I want to own, these watches that I think are my Grails, have really gone down in price on the secondary market. Now, I should have expected this, but I didn't really think about it. I didn't really think they'd drop this much and sort of bring that sort of price range down to a point where I'm getting a little bit closer to actually be able to afford it. And third, something that is definitely something that is going to allow myself to get to that point is that I need to sell some of my watches. I've realized recently that I have way too many watches. I'm not wearing some of them. And although I'm certainly not selling all of my watches because I love my watches, there's certainly quite a few that I'm quite willing to part with. And when I add that money that I've been putting aside, when I add the money of all the sales of the watches that I'm going to be selling, ooh, that is basically meeting the price of my Grail watch on the used market. So of course, if I'm gonna be spending this amount of money, I'm gonna put my due diligence in and I'm going to ensure that I'm buying the right watch. Because if I'm buying a cheaper watch, then I don't mind buying it online. I still do all my research, I still watch all the reviews, but I don't mind then not seeing it and taking a little bit of a gamble. But if I'm gonna be spending this sort of money, this Grail watch sort of money, I need to have hands-on experience with it. I need to be able to see whether I actually like it whether it's actually worth the money for me. So that's exactly what I did. I started doing my research on the watches that I was thinking about. In fact, there was three that I really sort of was thinking about. One I sort of knew would be the watch that it was likely to be the one that I wanted, but I also then went out and did a lot of trying on. And I tried to open my mind to other watches too. I ended up trying on watches from all sorts of brands, even some brands I'd never heard of, because I wanted to ensure that if I was gonna be spending this amount of money, that I bought the right watch for me. But that's when I started to realize then that there might be a problem. I was trying on all these lovely watches and all of them were lovely. They were very, very nice. I even tried on my three Grail watches and they were very, very nice. But it wasn't until I tried on my number one Grail watch that something sort of changed slightly. I tried on the Grand Seiko White Birch and it is lovely. It really stood out head and shoulders above any other watch I had tried. It was finished better, it presented better, the movement excited me more than the other ones, and that might just be me, but it was something rather special. But there was an issue. Because not only was I trying on these amazing rail watches, I was trying on some other watches that were in the range there as well, much cheaper watches. In fact, I tried on an Oris Pointer Date, and that watch really excited me too. And that's a more reasonably priced watch. And it excited me almost as much as the Grand Seiko. Now, they are not in the same category whatsoever, but I realized that 
although I loved the Grand Seiko, I also really loved that Oris. So I went home and I started thinking about these watches and I looked at the watches in my own collection. And I realized that there are many watches in my collection, many, many watches in my collection that I like as much as the Grand Seiko. Some of them I like even more than the Grand Seiko. Now that's not to say that I don't love the Grand Seiko, and that's also not to say that these watches are better than the Grand Seiko. Of course they're not, they're much more affordable watches. But what I realized is even if the watch is better, even if that Grail watch there is better finished, has a better movement, it doesn't mean I like it more than the watches that I already have in my collection. And when I started to consider that Oris, that pointer date that I don't own, a watch that I would like to own, I realized that I'd be just as excited buying that Oris as I would be buying that Grand Seiko. So I suddenly realized the money for that Grand Seiko, the money for those other watches I looked at, don't make any sense to me. Certainly not right now. Maybe in the future, you never know. Maybe when I turn 50, you never know. But I suddenly realized that there is no point spending that money on a watch that I'm going to like the same as a much cheaper watch. Why would I buy a watch that I love when I can buy five watches that I love just as much for the same amount of money? So that has been my decision. I've decided not to buy that Grail watch. I've decided to put that on the back burner and maybe in a few years time I may revisit this. But right now, I'm gonna buy a couple of watches with all this money that I've been able to put together that excite me equally as much as those Grail watches that I tried on. Watches that I'm so excited to own that I'm going to enjoy. I really appreciate you coming on this journey with me about Grail watches and why I'm not buying my Grail watch. Certainly not in any time in the near future. I think it's going to be quite a few years before I revisit this sort of price range. And even when I do, I'll be quite interested to see how my thoughts are at that point in the future. Will they have changed? Will the idea of that sort of money become a little bit normal to me? Because as you get into this watch collecting sort of hobby, they do sort of tend to be a little bit more normal at higher prices, which I'm very well aware of, which is why I like to still stick to the budget end of the market, even though I'm definitely dipping my toes into some slightly more expensive watches. As always, guys, thank you so much. Maybe check these videos out next.